viva. Viva. Viva Ayo viva. Viva. Viva Comrade Machar viva. Viva. Viva Comrade Machar viva. Viva. Viva Comrade Regina Kafa viva. Viva. Viva political bureau members viva. Viva. Viva NLC members viva. Viva. Viva all of us viva. viva. Comrade Chairman, without further ado, I would like to take this opportunity to recognize all protocols in the function, all the members of the party. and our distinguished guest who was seated amid us. I would like to take this opportunity to welcome all of you for today's function which marks the beginning of a very long journey in this country. You know we are in the process to transform from a movement that was established out of the ashes of a bitter struggle, a bitter conflict, a bitter war that befell the country in 2013. We are transforming from war to peace. Viva Estela Maior, viva! Viva Estela Maior, viva! And our transformation is in line with the revitalized peace agreement which brought us to Juba to be implemented in later and spirit. You remember the way we came in 2013 when we were one SPLM. There was no blue. There were only red. But the blue came out of the red. When we decided not to live in contradiction, when we decided to be born again in this country. We say to ourselves that we cannot cheat ourselves or cheat the people of this country who suffered since we were one Sudan since we took up arms during Anyanya 1 Anyanya 2 during the SPLA and then we achieved the CPA and we achieved our independence there was no reason to live in contradiction to cheat the citizens of South Sudan not want to listen, especially our colleagues, we left them behind on the 6th of December 2013. Comrade Chairman and colleagues from the political Beru of the then SPLM decided to make it known to the world the grievances that was around the country and the grievances within the party, the then SPLM, and the need to achieve a just, a vibrant, peaceful, 
equal and prosperous country. This was declared in the SPLM house. It was at that point that sharp disagreement emerged within the SPLM and later on is pinned in the armed forces leading to a struggle of which we regroup in Nasir and establish a movement called SPLM, SPLA-IO. This is our short history. We had three main objectives when we established the SPLM, SPLA-IO. One was to stop the war. The war which was destroying the country, which was killing the people and destroying the property and displacing our population. We had to stop it by ensuring that the peace process which was ongoing under the auspices of IGA goes ahead and was concluded as soon as possible to stop further bloodshed. Two, to make sure that upon implementing, or rather upon signing the peace agreement, we must implement the agreement in letter and spirit, because the peace agreement was meant to address the root causes of the conflict, which emerged in 2013. Lastly, was to usher the country to a free, fair, and democratic election. Viva Escalia Mayo, viva! Viva Escalia Mayo, viva! Today, ladies and gentlemen, comrades and friends, we are here under the weight of the peace agreement and I want to highlight this as we are left with less than six months to the end of the transitional period you know the peace agreement the implementation is lagging behind we have not been able to move in chapter one in chapter two in chapter 3, in all the chapters, and I'm sure some of you are questioning, after six months, what next? This must be your question. And this must be the questions on the streets. I want to assure you that the peace agreement which was negotiated and internationally brokered, we shall not throw it away. Ayo viva! Viva! Ayo viva! The agreement remains valid, remains important. Yesterday, today, even after the six months, as long as it is not being implemented as long as it is not implemented in letter and spirit we shall never throw the agreement which is meant to transform this country away others are already talking about elections and they are moving around the country and they are talking to the media about elections. Nobody, we are not afraid of going for elections in this country. Towards a democratic, united, and prosperous South Sudan, SPLMIO, viva! In fact, in 2013, 
who were calling for elections. Because the only election that was held in South Sudan was held when we were Southern Sudan. Election was held in 2010 when we were in the Sudan. That is why after independence, we wanted to go for a free, fair and democratic election, which did not happen. I want to assure you, SKLM, IO, is not afraid of elections. SKLM, IO, viva! Hurriya, salamu adala! Ayo, khiyara shah! Hurriya, salamu adala! Ayo, khiyara shah! We don't want an election which is not free, which is not fair, which is a sham to take place in South Sudan. We want an election which is credible, an election which guarantees the rights and the aspiration of the people of South Sudan. An election where South Sudanese will have an opportunity to vote for their leaders, leaders of their choice. Not anybody choosing for them leaders. In 2010, you know what happened. All of us were in the SPLM. In many states, elections did not go well. For instance, in Jongole, fighting emerged out of elections. Today, you call Greater Pibur administrative area. It came out of disputes of elections. In Western Equatorial, we had a problem due to elections. In Central Equatorial, there was a problem which emerged from the elections. In Bentiu, Comrade Angelina is seated here. We had a problem which emerged out of elections. In a will, there were acrimonies out of elections. In Eastern Equatoria, some candidates were taking ballot papers for themselves. These were electoral corruption. Almost in all the states. And you know, we had only one dominant party at the time. But even then, election could not go on smoothly with only one party, which was dominant, the SPLM. What about today? How many parties do we have? There are those who are in alliance of 13 parties. There are those who are in alliance of seven parties. Viva! 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 There are those who are in alliance of over 20 parties. In fact, somebody told me that in the country we have over 60 political parties. 64. And we have how many rights? We also have 64 rights. And if you don't implement the peace agreement, I want to tell you this. Some of these parties, they are forces attached to them. Including the SPLM. For us, our party is founded on truth. And we will not shy away to tell the truth. Viva Ajiba Haya Ajiba! Viva Ajiba Haya Ajiba! Viva Ajiba Haya Ajiba! Viva Ajiba Haya Ajiba! 
in the beginning, it was called SPLM SPLA. And they say political military high command. These arrangements remain up to date. That is why there is no political space in the country. If you want to hold meetings in hotel, if you want to hold your birthday in hotel, you must seek for permission from the national security. Then we ask, where is the Bill of Rights of South Sudan, which is in the Constitution? It doesn't exist. And if you ask, what is the interest of the national security? What is the interest of the police to stop any South Sudanese from holding meetings, from holding birthday parties, from holding wedding parties in hotel? What is the interest? Is it not because they are fearing that they will be discussing political issues? And what mixes? politics and military, they are supposed to be separate. We have been fighting that don't mix religion and the state. We are also today saying don't mix politics and the military. Towards a democratic, united and prosperous South Sudan with a free political space. SPLMIO Viva! Viva! What do we want? Yeah. What do we want it? Now! What do we want? Yeah. What do we want it? Now! And indeed, the change will come. The change has come. It will come and it will be there. And I want to assure you, with the brave young faces that I see, the change for South Sudan is here. SPLMIO Viva! SPLMIO Viva! Do you know how old was your chairman, Dr. Riyad Macha, 10, when he joined to establish the SPLM, SPLA? He was sweet 16. Do you know how old he was? Sweet 16. <laughs> He was 28, 28 years. And if I ask, how many of you are below 28 years? There is nobody. All of you are above 28. I don't know how old Angelina was. She must have been less than 28. This is to tell you that it was a long journey for him, it was a long journey for Salva Kiir, it was a long journey for Dr. John Garan and the colleagues. They were all in the same <coughs> age group. And for you, you have now started at the right time. 20 years, 30 years down the road, you will be seated like him. And we pray for his long life. We pray for the long life of his age mates who are among us here. So that they continue guiding the new and vibrant members. Our issue in South Sudan is the political space. We have reached the peace agreement, we have signed security arrangements, permanent ceasefire, though it's being violated, that
third one is already a done deal. It must be implemented in letter and in spirit. And this must be signaled very clear to IGAD, to the parties to the agreement, to RGMA, and all the international community. That on the matters of the agreement that transforms South Sudan into a democratic society, we cannot relent. Neither can we throw it away. The lack of political space is the next from. We have already started in the parliament. You have heard that we had a press conference which declared boycott. It is to do with the political parties act amendment bill of which other parties want to make it undemocratic. And I would like at this juncture to point my fingers on the SPN. Who wants to make it very difficult for the smaller parties, very difficult for members of our country, of our society, who do want to register their political parties, they want to make it very difficult for them to exist. We have been telling them, it is not your business. It is the business of the electorate. If they don't want X and Y, in elections, they will not vote for them. It is not for you to vote in the parliament, to say these are briefcase parties, these are groups, these are tribal groups. No. We have objected this in the parliament, and we will continue to object. And the real Islam Adala, Ayo Hiarasha, the real Islam Adala, Ayo Hiarasha. Until the bill is made democratic, because that is the foundation of political space and the exercise of democratic rights in South Sudan. This is the point that we made in the parliament, and this is the point that we continue to advocate. And we shall always articulate this anyway. Allow me to conclude by saying something brief about elections. As I told you earlier, we are not scared of elections, but we want a free, fair, and democratic election. The agreement, the agreement enshrined the need for a free, fair, democratic election. There is no question about that. And the agreement does this at the end of the transitional period. Meaning, from the time you begin the transitional period, you must be working to lay the foundation for a free, peaceful, and democratic election, including creating political space, which we are facing challenges to establish now. And I want to recognize, in a very special way, our chair for for Wara, the chair for Awin, if they are seated among us, and the chair for Jongole, are they seated among us? Jongole, thank you very much. Viva Estela Mayo, viva! Viva Estela Mayo, viva! Viva Cobrano Yet, viva! We also have another brave, vibrant lady, the Chair for a win. Women lead Viva. Viva. Women lead Viva. Viva. Forty percent Viva. Viva. I think she's not here. And also the chair for Eastern Equatoria. 
Comrade Mary Lodira. And all the chairperson who are on the ground, they are facing the relentless wrath of a dictatorial system. Leave alone the chairs of the counties, especially those counties which are not under us. Even the counties under us, they are also facing very hard challenges of the activities of the national security, of the organized forces, which impede on civil liberties, impede on political rights to association, the rights of expression. All these are the issues that we are facing here. You have heard that some people were sleeping in the embassies in this country. You have also heard some people fled the country. They are in New York. They're in Nairobi, they're in Europe. Why do you think they're running away? And these are people who are civil society activists. We don't want anybody to intimidate a human rights defender, somebody who is in his or her profession, an academia, somebody in a think tank like Ebony, Somebody who is a journalist, you have heard they arrested them also in the parliament. A very unfortunate scenario. These are issues that we are complaining about and we will never, never relent. We must open the political space in order for us to achieve a free and fair democratic election. This is our message. With these uh, few remarks, allow me.